For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. The love that of God that you want, that you need, is that of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ left His heavenly abode, heaven, of the riches of the Father, the glory of all the angels. And came down and was born in a miserable place called earth on a city called Bethlehem. Which in meaning is the house of bread. For Jesus is the bread of life. Born in a stable of Mary. Not of Joseph. Raised by his adopted father Joseph and Mary. Jesus Christ, God, became human. The human is also God. Manifested in the flesh. For Job says in his book, God, do you have eyes as I have? Do you have a mouth as I have? Do you suffer like I'm suffering, God? And many years after that, God, Jesus Christ, can say, yes, I have suffered as much as you have suffered. I have taken more abuse than any man can be abused. Jesus Christ was born to suffer and die, not for his sins, but for our sins. For the Roman government declared about Jesus, I find no fault in him. Now, do you find it kind of particular <clears throat> that when you get auto insurance or any other kind of insurance that you find a cause in there that says no fault? And one of the things that we have the option of purchasing in our lifetime is a thing called life insurance. You pay a lifetime for that insurance and you don't benefit from it. I'm here to tell you that God incarnate in the flesh has given man a policy called death insurance. And he has paid that premium by suffering, by being abused by his creation. According to the scriptures, he was beaten, spit upon, punched, crowned of thorns, cat of nine tails, nails, drowning in his own body fluids upon that cross. Death insurance paid by his blood, God's blood, Acts 20:28. 20, And what benefit does he get from that? A piece of meat that never wanted had anything to do with him. A race of people called man that are sinners. And like life insurance, you pay but you don't get anything back. Death insurance, Jesus Christ paid. And we benefit from that policy called the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. You can't die for your sins. If you die in your sins, you'll wake up in a place called hell for all eternity. They buried him. 
as will most cases they'll bury you. If they don't bury you in the ground, they'll bury you in a jar. They'll bury you with the ocean water. But you will be buried as Christ was buried. And unlike Christ, when you are buried, you will suffer in hell. Because your death, your burial, is not scriptural. It is not what God has ordained. God has never attended men to die. God has never attempted to put man into hell. God is long-suffering that he's not willing that any should perish. And yet our disobedience to God. We began to disobey God when God told Adam, don't eat that fruit. Well, then it's Adam's fault. Yeah, but you got the consequences and what you're going to do about it. There's absolutely, you cannot do anything for what Adam has done. It's like if your body, you have a cancer. There is nothing you can do to remove that cancer. You can think it out, you can work it out, you can buy it out, but you can't do nothing for that cancer. You've got to have an outside source step in and to remove that cancer. Your sin, you can't think your sin away, you can't buy your sin away, you can't work your sin away. You've got to have an approved source of God to remove that sin. You've got to have an outside source by God, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now, Adam sinned. Adam disobeyed God. God said, do not. Thou shalt not eat of that fruit. And he became in his rebellion against the word of God. Now, we step over B.C. before Christ. We jump into A.D., and we are in a period of 2017, and God says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And you stand there, sit there, and do nothing. You are in the same disobedience of your great-great-grandfather, Adam. Adam did what God told him not to do, you are not doing what God has told you to do. And that sin classifies you as disobeying the Bible, the Word of God. And when you disobey God today, your sin charge is still charged to you. And when you die, there is nothing there to pay the premium. You must pay it yourself. Now, if you were to die without life insurance, your family would have to scrimp and to save to come up with the burial, to come up with the coffin, to come up with the gravesite, to come up with the, the, the cement casing. Because there's been nothing provided for them upon your death. And when you die without death insurance of Jesus Christ, you have no payment for sin, and there is nothing, no one ever you can go to say, help me. Because you've already been dead. And you might try other policies. Say, well, preacher, I got a policy called religion. Religion when you try to cash that policy in when you die, burns up in the flame of fire. That's how good religion is. See, God did not... Let me say it like this. This is not what the Bible says. For God so loved the world that He gave us religion. And whosoever attends Mass, Temple, Hall, Church, Baptist... Shall we tell you, that's not what the Bible says. 
If God said religion, he would have said, uh, he would not have said, for God so loved the world that he gave his son. How do you know the son and religion are not the same? Duh. S-O-N. E uh, R E L I G I O N. Now, unless you go to modern school, that, that doesn't matter. You still get an A if you can't spell, but for those of the old school, those words are not the same. We're not doing common core spelling here. You say, well, I give money to organizations, I give to charity. You don't even know what charity is. You have not the foggiest idea what true love is. Because the Bible says, and we all know, that God is love. And you cannot know God unless you know Jesus Christ, the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So if you cannot come to God if you don't have Jesus Christ, you don't know what love is, for God is love, and you don't even know what charity is. Charity is love in action. That's God in motion. And the charity of God is that He gave His only begotten Son that you may have life after death, eternal life, to go to the Father. So you giving money to charity... Well, let me ask you a question. When you die, where does that cha charity send your records of how much you gave and how much time you gave to them when you're in hell? Where, where do they mail those off? At least the IRS has different regions to comp compared to where you live in the United States that you can send your information to a physical address. Alright, charity, you've died. Where do they send your information to? Do you really think that there's a post office in heaven or hell? Do you think God out of His glory tells Michael or any of the angels, go down to the post office and check the mail for all the charity receipts? So religion and charity cannot do you out of hell. Matter of fact, it gets you deeper into hell. Because what you can say to God, I've got this. And Jesus can say, I am the way. Well, I went to Baptist church all my life. Jesus never said I was a Baptist. Jesus did not say, I'm a Baptist, the truth, and the life. And whosoever goes to the Baptist church can go to the Father. That's not what the scriptures say. Again, you're relying on something that's man. Religion, money, politics, government is man-made. Nothing man-made will get you into heaven. Man is what got us in the condition we are in today. Sin became by one man, Adam. Everything that man makes breaks down. You buy a brand new house made by man. And sooner or later you got to call the plumber. you got to call the electrician. you got to call the roofer. You buy a brand new sparking brand new car off the showroom. And you're going to have to take it to the mechanic. Well, you can't rely on man. Well, say, preacher, we're man, and we break down thanks to the one man named Adam. God never created us to be broken. Man broke himself, and everything that man touches, he breaks. You can go in the middle of a forest somewhere. And it could be a beautiful forest with happy trees. And a nice vegetation. Have a man put a shovel 
to that ground. And you come back later and there'll be weeds. Nowhere will there be weeds but where man puts his shovel. The problems, the agencies that this earth faces because of man. Jesus Christ came to be the man, Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ came to be man and he became God. He is the God man, the man God. And of a Bible memory verse that we all, well not we all because I didn't grow up in a church. Well, good church. I grew up in a system. But most children will grow up and learn the simplest Bible verse in the Bible. John 11.35 Jesus wept. God cried. God visited a funeral and cried for his friend. So when you charge God, God, you don't know what I'm feeling. God, you are cruel. You are falsifying a charge before God because through Jesus Christ, he suffered, died, and bled. Well, God doesn't know what cancer is. God suffered that the Bible describes the cattle nine wombs on his back as a plower's field, the furrows thereof. His back was ripped open. I think that's worse than your cancer. When you go into the hospital that they give you anesthesia and they put you to sleep and they do what they need to do and they got pain medicine when you wake up and it's sore from the surgery you're getting relief but Jesus Christ had no relief on that cross they tried to give him of hyssop they tried to give him vinegar for a little comfort he said no that's not scriptural take it away from me I've got to suffer so you will die you will somehow be buried as Jesus was. Wherever Adam is buried is where he lies. Wherever Paul is laid, buried, he's there. His bones are there. Peter, James, John, their bones are still there. Polycarp. Every man from this century, the past century, and the century before that, are still in the tomb, the grave, wherever they are, they're still there. If I died right now, a month from today, I will be wherever you put me. Let me ask you a question. Go to a graveyard and say, hey, where's the victory? Now that's where the difference between man and Jesus is. Because the greatest headline ever to be printed is not found in the newspaper. The Japs have surrendered. World War II is over. That's piddly. That's, that's nonsense to compare to the greatest news that is to be print, that is printed, that is still to be read today. When the angels proclaim that he is not here, he is risen according to the scriptures. See, the one that died, Jesus Christ, did it according to the scriptures. What about my death? Let me ask you a question. What about your death? Did you know that there's a scriptural thing about you, my friend? And let me go to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. I will show you your scriptural bounds. As soon as I get there. Revelation 9, 6, 4. Revelation 4. 
Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Now where is death? There is no death in that passage. Amen. We were made to praise and glorify God without death. Now where did death come from? Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Eve. There was no death until they disobeyed God. Absolutely no death at all. And since man disobeyed God, since man has disobeyed God, death came. We die. Because of sin, we have a place called a graveyard, a cemetery, a casket. Death became by Adam disobeying God. Now, what's the consequences of you not believing in Jesus Christ? Not believing thou shalt believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. The Word of God. Not only will you get death, the wages of sin is death, but your disobedience, you get a place called hell. I read that in John 3.36. He that hath life he that hath the Son has life. He that hath not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. The Bible says in Acts 16.31, What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Not all of you have done that. You are no better than your grandpa Adam. There's no difference whether don't eat the fruit or believe on Jesus. If you don't do it, you rebelled against God. I shouldn't have to suffer because of Adam. My psychiatrist said it's because of my mother and everything's okay. And what gave your psychiatrist authority? A piece of paper from a man institute? The psychiatrists that went to school in the old days are not the same psychiatrists that are coming out of the schools today because men have changed the textbooks. Psychiatrists used to talk to you, now they give you pills. But God, since the revelation that He is not here, He is riven, has always given one prescription. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That has not changed. Well, preacher, my church believes in baptism. Man changed it, not God. Well, they said if I become part of this church, that's a man saying it. That's not God. You've got to check what God says on what you're believing. And what God says is found in the King James 1611 Bible. I said King James. I'm going to go so far to say that there's only one Bible. The other Bibles have been changed by man. For all have sinned. I don't care what sin you have done. If you rejected Jesus Christ, a man will go to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. That is the sin that will put you into the gates of hell. Now Christ died for our sins. Lying, stealing, cheating, sexual, immortal sins. We all stand account of being sinners for all have sinned and all have come short of the glory of God. And those sins have to be paid for. And the Bible says, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin, singular, of the world. 
Now you get that sin condition taken care of. You get that cleared off your credit. And you can get to the Father. And the way to get to the Father and get those sins cleared up and taken care of is by Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. God has only prescribed one way. Man and Satan has prescribed many ways. Sin, sin, sin. The wages of sin is death. That's why you're going to die. And there's no other God that can save you but Jesus Christ. And the Bible does acknowledge that there are other gods. They're just Satan manifested in different forms to please you. As a matter of fact, you got to make sure you have the Bible, Jesus, because Jesus said, there will be deceivers saying, behold, he's here. Believe him not. Behold, he's there. Believe him not. And even the apostle Paul wrote to us to tell us that there's another Jesus. There's another spirit. There's another gospel. And many of you have believed those lies. And we stand here and preach the truth that Jesus saves. And you say, preacher will prove it. This is not something that can be proved for your eyes. This is no magic trick. This is something called by faith. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You cannot today demand of God, say, prove to me, God. God's not obligated. Now, He may. But your salvation lies on what you do with Jesus Christ. You've got to take him by faith and by belief. There is no other way. Man has made a destruction of his life. Man-made objects fail. That's why the salvation of God is not man-made. Since Adam, God says, I can't trust him. You can't turn and put your faith in an earthly priest. That guy's a sinner. That's like taking your best dress shirt and trying to wash it with a muddy shirt to get it clean. That would be like a man out here drowning in the ocean and a person who can't swim is going to go save him. If you think you can take care of your salvation, just show up to God with $3 U.S. bills. The $3 U.S. bills is just as important as religion, works, whatever you do. Go back to Proverbs again. Not, not this time. I mean, it's in there. About the mark it. Bible says mark your word. Mark the word. Oh, here it is. Proverbs chapter 1. 24. Because I have called and ye refuse. I have stretched out my hand and no man regardeth it. But he has set 
at not all my counsel and with none of my reproof. You won't listen to God today. I also will laugh at your calamity and will mock when your fear cometh. That's God speaking. God, how dare you send me to hell? Don't you know who I am? Ha 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 Go to hell. Last week I was listening to one woman, she was arguing with you that you are shouting at <laughs> I say what crazy people are there. Yeah. <laughs> you don't realize that the love of God, that God will laugh at you when he casts you into hell because he has sent loud mouth preachers to tell you how not to go. You are, the, the Bible says foolish. I will just call you out stupid to refuse what God has offered to you free of charge. No cost. And you reject it week after week after week, and I'm talking to the vendors. Even those that, you know, what is that guy doing? Your first time here, and you're like, What's going on here? We're preaching the gospel how to be saved. And you heard that Jesus saves. And you reject it. And you will stand before God. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. And you'll have the nerve to explain to why you are better than Jesus Christ. This man over here, he's got a petition. He's looking for Florida voters. There's nothing wrong with that. You just can't be a Connecticut voter. You've got to be a Florida voter. And you can sign his petition, whatever it is, if you want or if you don't want. And when it comes to heaven, God wants born-again Bible-believing Christians. You cannot be a Satan and say, Oh yeah, go ahead, come on in. Hopefully this guy will sh ask you to show some kind of proof to prove you're a Florida. Well, God's going to say, I want proof you're a Christian. Well, here's my church credentials. Sorry. Go straight to hell. Don't pass go. Well, I'm a fifth degree Mason. Well, you can go down to the quadrillion degrees of hell and burn forever because that don't work. Well, I believe in Allah. You mean the one that killed Christians? Are you really serious? I'm definitely going to laugh at you in hell. You're trusting in somebody that killed my people. I'm the Roman Catholic Church. Oh, really? Mary can do it. Would you like to speak to her? Would you like to know what Mary said in the Bible? Whatsoever my son saith, do it. Well, God, I'll tell you what. I'm a miserable sinner, God. Ooh, that don't sound good. God, I have sinned. I have done wrong. I have blasphemed you. I have used your name in wrong. But the only way I can come to you, God, is by Jesus Christ in the blood. The righteousness of your Son only, of mercy and grace, that can I come to you. Enter thou. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Jesus Christ, the water of life. Jesus Christ, the way. Jesus Christ, the truth. Jesus Christ, the life. You come to God by Jesus Christ, you will find yourself in glory. You cannot get onto United Airlines with American Airlines ticket. They will boot you off the plane, probably by force. You cannot go into this ball stadium over here with a movie ticket. 
You cannot win lotto with a bingo card. And you cannot enter heaven with anything but Jesus Christ. Don't bring your pastor, don't bring your priest, don't bring your pope, and don't bring your false god. It will not be accepted. And don't you dare come as yourself because you are a sinner. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none good, so don't come up to me. Oh, preacher, I'm good. No, you're not. Let me talk to your spouse. Let me talk to your children. Let me talk to your parents. Let me talk to your boss. Let me talk to your religious leaders. See what they think of you behind your back. And then go ahead, trust that they're going to get you to heaven by what they say about you behind your back. Yeah. Well, you see, when I die, people are going to burn candles and give money. They may hate your guts and just trying to suck up to your money and inheritance. You don't know who's going to do what after you die. But I know who's going to take care of my body and my soul and my spirit when I die. Jesus Christ, these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. How's that? I don't dare put my soul in trust of any man. When I had to do a funeral, I don't put my trust in the man. I check that body to make sure there's nothing stolen. You know, they will steal rings and jewelry. The man that takes care of death. There has been swindling with death and bodies. And but Jesus Christ is approved. God is certified. God is assured. And God cannot, will not, and ever lie and deceive you. How about man? How about whoever you are trusting living on this earth? Well, I got that television preacher. Is he going to come and do your funeral? Is he going to visit you in a hospital? The only time of day he'll give you is to sign his name to the check and deposit in his bank. You guys spend the money to go to them if you can, can spend the money. They're not going to come to you unless you're rich and famous with a bunch of cameras following them. How come you don't find that Myers, Oscar Myers, there preaching on the street? Where's Joey preaching on the streets and telling people about their salvation? Where are those faith healers in the hospital? People are so stupid. Wasn't one of those faith healers, uh, didn't he build a hospital? Duh! Oh, I can heal people, but here's my hospital. You got Medicaid? Medi what, what insurance you got? I got the death insurance sealed by God, Jesus Christ. I've been certified by the Bible. That Jesus saves. And Jesus alone. The, the words of Jesus are, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John. The Gospel of John. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And a boastest, braggadest Catholic will say, Oh, I got Mary. That's not what the Bible says. Well, in my religion, I get virgins. From what I've heard, it's not like in your religion you're going to get Virgin Virginians and they're going to kick your butt. You okay? Rest assured in God's word, Jesus saves. You will not rest in peace if you do not believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior.
There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. And the wicked are those that will not obey what God has said. And this all came about by a man not listening to what God has said. From the beginning of the man do not do this. He done it until today. I want you to do this and we don't do it. You will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will suffer the wrath of God. And those who do believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that are saved, you will get the glory. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Your number one concern in the eyes of God is, are you a saved sinner or are you just a sinner? Unredeemed, unbought, unwashed. Unknown. As far as the book of life, there's no, there's no spot with your name. There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. You don't even know my name. Now, you realize, let's say if an accident happened here right now and if the police were to come and the officer said, well, give me names. You know the only name you would give would be Jesus. That's all he said, Jesus. I hope none of you think that I am saying I'm Jesus, because I'm not. I'm preaching Jesus. Your life begins at Calvary. Your life can end when you walk away from Calvary in the wrong direction. I'm a Christian. I'll tell you what a Christian is. He is signed, sealed, and delivered by the blood of Jesus Christ alone. He trusts in nothing other than Jesus. That Jesus Christ is his only hope. Minus nothing. There are no works but the finished work of Jesus Christ. There's no Mary. There's no eating. There's no death. There's no giving. There's no nothing but Jesus Christ that washed away his sins, that died for his sins according to the Scriptures, and was buried and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and you don't wear between your breasts it is Jesus who is God and God is Jesus. That's a Christian. Don't believe the news media because we know they're fake news. Who they say are Christian are Christian killers. Check Fox's Book of Martyrs on that one. He say what page? All of them. You know, you need two books in your schools today. You need the King James Bible, you need Fox's Book of Martyrs, and that will just that will seal up all education. Maybe maybe Pilgrim's Progress as a third book. But the deterioration of America today is because you have taken the Bible and got out. Oh, in God we trust. God bless America. Well, which God? There's hundreds of thousands of gods. America does not believe in my God of the Bible.
Donald Trump does not represent the God of the Bible. The public school system does not have the God of the King James Bible. You're lucky if the courts have a Bible to make a swear on. It's so funny that in the court system, you would put your hand on the Bible and say, I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, and every lawyer there are liars. No wonder you got to get the Ten Commandments out, because you can't have thou shalt not bear a false witness in the courtroom. They're full of false witnesses. There were false witnesses at Jesus' trial against him. But your number one concern is what about your sins? Either you're a saved sinner or you're a lost sinner. Either the only way for you to get to heaven is Jesus Christ or there's hell. That's it. An hour about one man, Jesus Christ. An hour about one way to God, Jesus Christ. An hour about the salvation of God, Jesus Christ.